All right, here we go. Let's call this meeting to order, and this is our budget meeting of January 31st. So the um, we will go over all the information, Barb, and I will allow you to take over the meeting from here. Thank you, Your Worship. So, wow, second round of budget discussion, and, and it, um, looking forward to it because now everybody's had more of an opportunity to go through the, the budget. We're just going to follow the same process as we did on go round one. So we ended up at, we finished off 2101, which would be page 19 and 20, 20, let's see when. Oh, the page number is right, sorry, I don't know. It would be line number 441, no, 4101, C101. If everybody kind of catches up to me, sorry. One, we're starting on, okay, sorry. So is everybody with the land? <laughs> I guess I'm on the wrong line. We good? Um, I'm not sure it would be fair to say we finished that. We had some questions oh, I thought on, we did, sorry. We've had some questions, that, but Greg wasn't here to answer them. Oh, right. About the body cams and the winch for the truck. So, Greg, the issue was, what's the, tell us some more about the winch. Uh, haven't had one. I assume what would what would bylaw use it for? I use the winch for part of my animal. Right now, I'm using my own. Um, it's necessary. The only other way I can do it to remove uh, beaver dams, uh, and uh, when I get stuck down a, um, a river bank, is um, I use uh, I've been boring the pole cat at Public Works when available, but that's only Monday to Friday, and a lot of my work is after hours and on the weekends with the contract trapper that comes out and helps me. So the winch was for that. Gotcha. Put it on the front of the truck so we can, and I've got a big claw made up, custom made to be, and it's very effective at tearing apart beaver lodges, and it's worked pretty good up until now. But I used the pole cat, it's a big truck with a winch and a boom on it, and how it works. And uh, I've got this portable winch of my own that I've been using since, to, just to get the job done. That's what I was asking for. So if I could just interrupt for a second, then maybe that should we should reclassify that under animal control, right? With the destructive no. animal stuff up in bylaw. Whatever you feel, yeah. yeah, that's. I mean, we would if we were stuck in a ditch and we would use it to pull ourselves up, of course, if we had a winch. But that's right. The primary the reason for asking is. for it. I mean, it's not 100. percent I mean, I, I can continue with my own. No, no, no. That's a good answer. We just didn't understand. That's all. Yeah. And the second one was. Uh, uh, before your employment, Greg, there was a bit of a sordid history with body cams, and we just wanted to talk about... Well, I, I've got intimate knowledge of the... If you're referring to the incident with my predecessor, and if I, I have intimate knowledge of that case because I was the supervisor and one of the investigators, and subsequently liaising with the crown attorney as to what's going to happen with that matter. So that, the, that isn't a case of a malfunction. That was a case of an erasing, an erasure, excuse me, right. a matter so. being deleted. And I have intimate knowledge of that because I li liaised with the RCMP computer expert who an analyzed that whole thing. Right. So the issue is really, this one's just financial. Right? It's the, um, uh, well, I guess it is from a policy standpoint, is it, your, is it your intention that the officers would be required to turn the camera on at the beginning of their shift, turn the camera off at the end of the shift, and otherwise it's mandatory? We would or? reflect. I've been um, um, getting a lot of help and um information from Calgary City Police. Their coordinator is a friend of mine. He's been their entire program and Medicine Hat as well. They are seeking, um, the one I'm seeking is the link up with Taser, not not the Taser, not, not the, that's who makes it, not, the, not that. Taser also produces body cams and their system requires no on-site server or anything like that. It goes into a cloud and the only person that would have access, I mean, if we had such a system, would be myself with access to it. The city police policy is that they don't require them to be on all the time. I, I, my experience as a police officer, I think it is a good idea to have it on all the time, but they don't require members to have it on all the time. Only at the outset of an anticipated, what's their wording, anticipated investigation, they would turn them on. But quite frankly, the, the, the two fellows I supervise, they get confronted good and bad by the drinking coffee, making coffee sometimes. Right. And they may, may not be on and there's no point in turning it on. Like my counterpart in the city police says, there's no point turning it on halfway through an incident because that just adds to the confusion. 
Right. You know. So this was the idea. Plus, we get vexatious and frivolous complaints. I'm not saying I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not saying we're, we're a basket of sunshine, but I, um, I try to maintain the department fair and firm and impartial. Um, and uh, but a lot of we do get vexatious and sometimes extravagant claims that I simply can't imagine are, are true in my experience. However, if it was a body cam, it would be irrefutable evidence. So you're um, just looking for greater accountability, transparency. Evidence, yeah. could add evidence to us. For example, the other day, one of my officers was confronted, threatened to be getting beaten up over snow notice and the fellow cut off the bylaw truck so he couldn't leave the area. This is what happened. This is, but of course, um, we're going to have the RCB investigate it, but this happened the other day, um, two days ago. And in fact, if there was a body cam, he was wearing a body cam or a vehicle cam. It would, much as like you see on TV, if you watch any of the American policing shows, that's pretty good evidence of real time how, how it actually happened. And so that was my, my purpose. It's not any kind of expensive computer outlay for us. And I don't believe it would even cost $4,000 a year. I've been talking to the Taser fellow out of Vancouver. We were going to try them on a trial basis. I have them, but we have to go through a webinar training session with them, which we're setting up. We're trying to set up here this week. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Do you want Okay, so we're good to move on to fire then. Okay. So, um, fire service for 2017 budget was 392,810. The request for 2018 is $405,045. Um, reconciling out the global numbers, then we were the noticeable and mentionable changes in the budget include um, we reduced the municipal the revenue from municipal agreements by five thousand dollars in just mostly because of historical actuals and then that whole um, agreements between um, our partners is under review right now to determine what the new um, new share will be so until that comes out we've just reduced that revenue communication we reduced by twenty seven hundred dollars uh, for provision for radios repairs to the building was an increase of seventy three hundred there's a new two-year provision of forty eight hundred dollars per year for overhead door switches and a one-time provision for a driveway repair for 2018 other repairs an increase of nine thousand dollars for a one-time provision for um, improvements to the HVAC system and then we reduced other general services $1,700 we eliminated a roof inspection for because it was done in 2017 it didn't need to be done again in 2018. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Tom? <laughs> uh, yeah just wondering why the driver repair and the HVAC system aren't capital. Well Is that usually like that's not maintenance that's sure that's general maintenance. is it maintenance yes it is yeah okay Jim? but the HVAC system is there we're just so maintaining I'm it I'm assuming it's just a repair to it or update to yeah. it yeah okay Jay? Um, just real quick um, on 145 salaries anybody know why we were almost 10% over budget on salaries um, salaries um, if you remember, there was a big uh, adjustment to the honorariums cool. for yep. 2017, and also it's largely driven by the number of calls. So we estimate that as um, motor vehicle revenue goes up, then we would expect salaries and wages to go up because it's all on um, per call basis response fees, mostly. I mean, other than the captain and the chief. Gotcha. Uh, and the other two. Um things and this goes back to uh, again i'll just say for the record again how much i appreciate barb that uh, uh the way that this is done now and the attention to detail that you've already put into this at the same time given that the bottom line of this current document is um three hundred eighty five thousand dollars in new spending um wherever i think we can shave i'm still going to ask mm -hmm. so if we can look at 153 education um 
just based on the couple of years actuals that are there, could we make could could everyone live with it being four thousand? Uh, and the same was true for one fifty seven repairs equipment, just based on the couple of years actuals that are there. Could we shave it to fifteen thousand? Sorry, one fifty seven and one fifty three. 153 education and 157 repairs equipment. So would you... Um... Just the, the actuals haven't been over 4,000 for education. Uh, and I know two years is probably not enough to look at, but that's what we've got. So that and then on repairs equipment on 157, um, we've got a big spread. One year with 14,000, one year with two, we've budgeted 21,000. So could we, could we live with 15,000? Um, so I agree with you. I just, um, if, I, if I could just step back for a moment, Jay, to the education, first of all. Yep. I see there was a new line item this year that was $3,825, and that was they've um, invested in some software training that I think is going to be ongoing, and then they only asked for a $2,000 provision for training to go out like to Lakeland College and that when they have to do some. So I'm not sure if um, it, to shave the education budget, okay. that's the purpose of that increase. So if, if you're okay with that. Yep. Um, but then the other one, the only thing, and I agree with you, and the thing is, I guess if, if something happens and they go over, they go over budget because it's a maintenance item, right? Of course, I mean, and I happens, wouldn't so. expect the fire department to have anything less than what they need. Yeah. Just trying know, to sharpen no, the pencil that. wherever we can. Yeah. Um, so, so if we bring that down to 15, 15. you think it's still appropriate? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now that's minus 6, so we're at 379. Oh, you're gonna, oh I'm sorry. Sorry, I did see you. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that... Those notes got captured. I just okay. had a question with the recent developments in, in carbon. Is there going to be any impact on Drumheller for fire services? No, because we do have a, um, a mutual aid agreement, which we would then bill them for any response that we would need to do. So just increase our revenue along with increasing our, our response calls. Expense. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> It, there is an area that just thinking about uh, cell phone area is we're about three thousand dollars higher in budget than our expenditures are, so that would be an area if we were looking to cut a little bit of money, we possibly we probably could. So, so there is a one fifty line one fifty. So I do have a new line item provision for satellite telephone. So I don't know what that is exactly. Greg, do you know what that is? Oh, it's never in here. So, is that something I guess new? it just shows as a new line item in here. Doesn't work on cell phone technology. I've used it. Right, but that's something new that we purchased, or we're no, we're it's, it's not new. We're we're going along with the old oh. one. Oh, it's it's. We're I'm using sorry, it. Lynn just told me it's been charged there all along. It was just never individually listed, oh, so it looked right. like a new item to so me. So we're not buying a new one. Okay, so then right off the top, then there's a thousand dollars if we've already been paying for it that we yeah. wouldn't have to necessarily account for. Right? Yeah. So. One fifty. So last year's actual was nine thousand. Um, Twenty seventeen's is only seven thousand actual. But I, remember, these actuals aren't actuals. These were actuals at that point in time. So December's bills probably were not in here when this was printed. Mm -hmm. So I'm just a little okay. bit. I would okay. like to confirm the actual actuals now that I said we just have to be careful about those numbers because it's a point in time. So I'll, I'll do some review, and if I find that we could shave a little bit, I will shave a little bit. Okay. On the um, item 148, communication, the actual in, in 2016 was 7,600. Then it almost, well, not quite doubled in 2017, mm -hmm. and now you want it to go up. That's it's in here. like how would communication change that drastically? 148. So we'll do some review again. So obviously something was at 12,000 at that point in time. It's probably the. What was that? Excuse me, Barb, sorry. Um, 
the new 911 uplink had to be put in and there was work had to be done locally at the base of the water tower. Um, and we have a lot more details, but we had to pay. Uh, we That's had to have the new 911 and the server, everything put in there because they did away with the old, the, the, the windborne tower right. issues. Yeah. So I remember from the water tower. But do we not know. pay, um, no fire, but do we not pay then as a, we'll look, there might be a fee that for that radio to be on every, yeah, like we now pay we're paying internet months. fee or some kind of yeah, fee, right? 200 and something dollars every three months, I believe. Okay. Case. We'll do some more looking in there though, just to ensure that it's valid. Anybody else have any questions? <coughs> I thought cancer was course going to die. Okay. So then on to um, disaster services 2401. So last year's budget was 46535 This year's budget request uh, 71405 um, the mentionable variances this year is um, elimination of the revenue grant, conditional grant of 110000 um, and we reduced the offsetting other professional expense by 109000 And then we increased the provision for education by $1,500. So um, all the kind of corporate safety education such as WEMIS, first aid, stuff gets charged to this um, function. So we've increased that budget some. Yes, Jay, thank you. Um, Barb, it's one of the few areas, you know, the variances are, are what they are, but the, it's one of the few areas where the global change is actually the biggest result in the budget change. So is that just a reallocation? <laughs> so the answer she is yes. Said yes, we did do a reallocation on wages. Okay, that's what I figured. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where this thirty thousand dollar difference is. That that's only twenty. Here. So the difference in budget year over year was an increase of twenty four thousand eight seventy, and out of that twenty four thousand eight seventy, twenty one thousand twenty two thousand is wages. Yeah. Okay. So you just they were in a different spot. Precisely. Yeah. Last year. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. So the other professional. Budget this year was 112,000. Is that the 110,000 kind of in and out yeah. for the regional yes. collaboration? Yeah. Yes, it was that grant um, for emergency response plan. Yes. Any other questions? Okay. Moving on to safety codes, Co uh, 2601 function. So the budget last. 14,185 this year, 14,595, and um, so overall an increase of $410. It's 1,940 of that is the global wages salary. So really, no no mentionable changes in expenses otherwise in that account. Yes. Jay. You're, you're right. This is the, the only thing I would like some clarification on again is 202, other professional. Um, over budget by $30,000. Okay, so if I could speak to that, 202 is directly related to the cost of per it's cost of goods sold of the permits, and its average is about 70% of um, the sale of a permit. So that's Superior Safety Codes doing their work. And then we kind of had an over this year, so there is a bit of a, it was an adjusting credit back. 
So that's why we look like we're over budget and or under budget in 20. Under budget, but at the same time, the, the revenue was in, way up. In and excess. it is. It's so correlated. It's, it's in and Absolutely. Thank so, you. Yeah. Any other questions? Can you, when we get to these pages and you get amortization, that would be a part of the the office space, or what would that be? What are we amortizing here? That's a good question, and and I'm going to go do some research on that particular function. But I believe at one point in time, there's a vehicle that was allocated to um, development officer, and it probably hasn't been reclassified. I know I have a note myself. What are we amortizing? And that's the only thing I could think of because <laughs> there was at one point in time. And that, that makes about sense. <laughs> but we, we should clean that up. Yes. <laughs> okay. They get to drive the graphic. <laughs> okay, so I can move on to 2602. At Safety Codes Palliser, so of course we we um, manage all the safety codes on behalf of um, Palliser. So last year's budget was $9,510. Um, this year's request $13,965. The primary um, changes or mentionable changes, we increased revenue. The contract to Palliser does get increased by CPI annually. Um, we reduced travel $400 and we reduced the other general expenses request by $850. Any questions? Should I wait for the mayor? Yeah. Um, okay, so moving on to development permits, 2603 is the function. The request in 2017 was 68730 2018, the budget request is $71,425, um, an increase of 2695 and that's primarily wages increase. However, um, we did increase revenue of development permits by 1,000 and we decreased the advertising expense by 500. Or sorry, we increased it by 1,500. I'm already sleeping. An advertising budget had to be increased because all the development decisions and notices that have to be, or special meetings with um, bylaw changes or anything. Is uh, meeting expenses, is that MPC? Yes, that it is. This? For the, yeah. yeah. So, sorry. Again, just because I said things backwards there, but we were increasing the advertising budget 1500 and increased the revenue of development permits by 1000 Uh Yes, Jay, sorry. Thanks, Barb. Um, item 232 payroll benefits here. Uh, very strange to see it, sure. it out of whack. I yeah. um, why it's out so much. Um, so our development officer, after they, they're not um, employees, uh, are not entitled to LAPP till their oh, one year service, LAPP but they can in. buy back and we have to pay um, our portion of buyback. Okay. Yeah. That would do it. Thank you. Any more questions? So on to animal control, function 2610. Uh, the budget request for 2017 was 11,920. 2018 request is 14,225. Um, and primarily, so a change of $2,305, 2,000 of that is an increase to other professional for destructive animal control. Yes. Barb, was this the one that you were going to look into a multi-year discount uh, on on licenses and yes. stuff? Yes. So moving forward, we will be, at some point in this year, we will be bringing forward a report for council consideration on options 
for animal tag licensing every year. Okay. Uh, if I could, just a quick, quick question. Since the revenue number doesn't seem to change much year to year, uh, Barb, I know you've moved, made tremendous strides for compliance for all kinds of things, but is it possible that this is one area where, despite our best efforts, we're still seeing a tremendous amount of non-compliance in the community? Um, you know, honestly, Greg would be better to speak to that. No, um, we do, but um, if we come across, all I can say is if we come across an animal that is not registered, whether we catch it in a trap or otherwise, it's not released to the owner with all possible compassion until they do register it at the appropriate rate. Cats continue to be elusive, no pun intended, when you get them registered, some people just don't think they have to, but um, in an effort to... Uh, bring about compliance um, we, we do comport ourselves in, in a way to encourage people to do this and some people just simply won't like I took two pit bulls home for the weekend because the guy wouldn't register them and wouldn't you know um, because he wouldn't there's no way around it you know he has to register before we give him his dogs back wow. um, well, I think we could do more with education perhaps than, than I have done I think I could do better with educating the public um, because some people still treat the cat registration as if it's like they just poo poo it away like it's we've heard the arguments it's, it's the cat's nature it's all this like right, right, right. That. and I think we could probably do more to educate them than we have done okay thanks guys let me just add to that I think that that's not inconsistent with other municipalities especially with uh, with cat licensing like a lot of them s struggle with licensing their cats for some reason so dogs aren't an issue but cats seem to be so it's their could, elusiveness. Could you tell me how much of this money ends up going to the Humane Society shelter? Nothing. We have a very good relationship with them by way of uh, um, fostering animals, and we help them if they can, and they help us, but uh, we no longer give money to the Humane Society. We don't give the Humane Society anything. Not that I'm aware of. No. Do so we have they, a they pick up an animal that is registered in town and they had to feed and care for it for a couple of days until the owner picks it up that doesn't cost us anything no we have the, by, by the same token they will they will come across an animal no and i have discussed this with them but they will come across an animal that they can't and we will say um it, it's kind of quid for, it's kind of one hand washes the other i'll say we will lodge that cat under the municipal bylaw at the vet office and we will assume you know the fees for that animal we have a very good relationship with the vet office as well. But we don't, as I say, I, I can't give you an exact total of how we help each other, but I feel it's a healthy relationship and it's not one based on you have to give me money before I'll cooperate. We have a very good, and it, and it was, I, I think. So we end up paying money to the vet? The vet lodges our cats for us. If we come across a stray cat, so a cat. What money out of this goes to the vet? Yeah, other other uh, other professional services, other general services. Sorry. So, so if if it's if it, if um, an animal goes to the vet and is lodged, but then it goes back to the owner, we bill all those charges that we are charged yes, from we don't, the vet. Yes, yeah, we bill those to the owner. Back and to the, the owner. Must register the animal, the cat, and sometimes small dogs. We will. Um, the vet is very good at keeping them for us. Uh, larger animals on a need be basis out of the commercial kennels at one. There's no set fee. We only, as a need basis, we, we, we pay. And do we, when we bill them, <clears throat> does the money come back under line 246, the revenue line in here? Like, is that part of the $11,000 or is that just for licensing straight up? The right answer would be yes, but I would actually have to go into the back door of the system to make sure it's being coded to that line. Yeah, we've talked about this. I, I, Barb knows far more than I do, but I believe that's what's going on. That the, if uh, you have two days kennel fees, register the animal, and sometimes if there's uh, um, you know, any kind of vet work required, I mean, if it's an animal in distress that needs the right thing to do, we will we will take care of it and then worry about paying, you know, getting, uh, reckoning it up with the owner later on. Um, I guess the way I'm looking at it is the, the Humane Society, the Animal Shelter, uh, seems to be doing a heck of a job for this community. Um, 
in terms of, you know, getting rid of stray cats and all sorts of things like that. And I'm, I'm very surprised that the town doesn't support it. So am I being, is that just general comment or is there direction to put it on the wish list for after budget? Like you, would you like us to put that on this list of, I'd, I'd be happy to talk to Kelsey and Deb at the, if you'd like, and then report back to council as to what, if you'd like. Yeah, maybe. Uh, we have a very good relationship. Fred just said if, if they wanted to do a presentation for council, council sure. might be receptive to looking at their needs. And, yeah. Well, it's working really well, in my opinion. Right now, it's working very well. And they have the, um, the yeah, inmate is in there helping out as well. It's I think it works very well. Just like to note for the record that Councillor Risky is out of order. We're trying to reduce the expenses, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and and also for the record, uh, you know, Greg, the community has no idea what they owe you and your compassion for these animals. And yeah, you shrug it off, buddy. But you know, uh, the constant ebb and flow in the menagerie on your compound. I'm just going to say one more time for the record: your mo is a saint. I'm still trying to get rid of the last three we fought through. They're still there. <laughs> but anyway, I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate the comment. Thank you, Councillor Garvin. I appreciate it. Thanks. With animal control. <laughs> okay. So let's move on to weed control then. It's function 2611. So 2017 budget was 43,720. 2018 budget request 41,290. Mentionable variances to the budget is we increased revenue custom work by $1,000 and we reduced other general expense or other general services expense request by $2,500. Questions? Yeah. What is that part? The other general services? Is that contract stuff? Yes. Because we were sure under budget in 2017 if the actuals are actual. So that was the only, I mean, I, I appreciate the reduction. I'm just wondering if there's any more wiggle room there. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think uh, this is one of those things that weather can play a part. Oh, yeah, huge. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I Nothing grew this. last summer, yeah. not even weeds. That's, I was just going to say the same thing as uh, Councillor Zaruski is that it's really a function of seasonality of, of moisture. And so last year, yeah, nothing. There were really very little weeds because there was very little growth last summer. So, so that that is contract labor then. Well, yeah. and contract it's, spring is in there as okay. well. Yeah. It's thank yeah. you, Barb. Yes. I I would wonder. I know it's kind of hard to do, and and you said you have to put numbers together, but it would be really nice. Maybe for the next budget to see a line in here that says carbon tax on each of these. Oh, so we... I, I just have carbon tax in 1201. I have a provision in, okay. in there for I think it's I think I reduced it to ten thousand this year. It was in 1201. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, mosquito control 2612. So the budget request for 2017 was 100. Sorry, can Sorry. We go, if we don't mind going back, just mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> line 263 under weed control, we spent zero dollars in 16, 27 dollars and 17, and we have 1700 dollars or 1500 dollars. So we're really not needing to replace items. In here very much. So we, if we wanted to, we could probably drop that to five hundred dollars a year. And there's a thousand dollars. Or is it the year that we need to replace? Because that that one is chainsaws, lawnmower. Yeah, yeah no, we have. Um, we're good. We're yeah, we're more than good. So we do set to five hundred. Five hundred okay. from fifteen. I betcha. I betcha. Yeah, not to weed control, you're probably right. Sorry, Lynn was just saying it's most likely being done. It's probably just being put into parks. 
uh, we're really, but we're, uh, I just know this, that we're not buying chainsaws or weed whippers or like we have a sea can full of that stuff. So we're not buying more. Good. Well, that's great. And me, when I see that, like, you know, and then I say, ooh, we haven't bought any for a couple of years. It's got to be the year that we're going to have to. Okay. Hi, Lisa. Just one more question on postage. Maybe I missed something from earlier, but uh, it was not budgeted for 2017 and yet showed up as 722 as an actual. I know. We are doing a far better job at allocating postage costs. Postage cost and copier cost. So now we actually, um, I recently we updated our postage machine and now we have codes, you know, for different departments because before Perfect. it was pretty much a catch all. And so you will see some strange variances on actuals and budget numbers and copier costs and postage costs for sure. But again, overall, shouldn't have changed a lot. Suddenly it's like, yeah, don't tell me we don't send bills out. Who's paying for that postage? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other questions? So, mosquito control. 2612. So the budget 2017 was 117,910. The ask for 2018 is 82,880. Um, we reduced the request for contract helicopter spring by 5,000 based on five-year historical data. And we reduced the chemicals and salts request by $20,000. Again, um, that was based on five-year historical data. So shock nobody that that's the one or same thing. So contract 271. <clears throat> we reduced it from 45 to 40, but there's nothing in the 2017 actual column, and really? the 2016 is 23. So by this cowboy's calculations, boy, could we go lower. So apparently it cost about 20 small thousand for each time. Um, so if they thought if they had to do two sprays yeah. in the year. Again, remember last year, so dry we had... We no did mosquitoes. None. We, we, did we didn't do any spraying last, no year. Spraying last year. So you still want to budget for two sprays then? Is that what you're yes. saying? Yes. Well, we could budget for one, but then we might end up going over. over we right. But two, if we so budget for one, one. we're saving $20,000. Unless we need to. And then so, we'll yes. drive so all we, the tourists we, out of the valley. We could speed. certainly go to one spray, but just know that if we happen to need two next year when we're sitting here having a discussion, remember why we're over by 20. So, yeah. so I, I'm fine with us doing that. Um, but we, we just, yeah. Okay, sorry. so my question is, um, call my memory, um, we actually purchased mosquito control chemicals from the city of Calgary because they had an overabundance. Edmonton. Yeah. Or Edmonton. Um, did, have we gone through that supply? Because I remember from past discussions. Well, we can't because the actuals are so low compared to the budget figure on we, 276. So, so we didn't do any aerial spraying last year. We still did some um, control in the ditches, and that is vector back is what, we used and we did use some of our supply up we bought uh quite a bit of the material so we we did use some of it up and it does have a shelf life so our expectations this year we will probably use the rest of it up so um so we do have so last year again we were a little bit lower because we didn't buy we, we purchased that chemical the end of 16 if i recall right and so we didn't have much chemical that we bought last year but I would expect that we might be buying more this year. So, and that back to back was a one-time deal from the city of Edmonton. So. Yeah, because if I'm not mistaken, that chemical that we used, they were no longer right. using That's provincial right. wide. So Band, then, I believe. Be, they, yeah, so it was going to be a, about ninety thousand per application at the time when we had yeah. the discussion back in 2016. So by purchasing yeah. from the city of Edmonton, was we were realizing some cost savings. So I just want to make sure savings, that yeah. that's being reflected in these numbers for when we do have to actually purchase the unbanned product, which costs that much more. Well, the, it's not that the unbanned product or the stuff that's still current, I'm trying to remember the name of the new one, but it's not that it's a lot more, Durasman, Durasman. Uh, it's not that it's 
um, much more expensive. The problem is it's not as effective as Vectorback right. was. So you have to use more. So you might have to use more depending on on how you apply it and when you apply it. It's a little, it's a, there's a lot more science involved with the new material than there was with the Vectorback. So. Hence, we were told at that time that we would end up spending more on yeah. mosquito control than yeah. historically we have. That's been. that's right. Yeah. So, so I don't know if I feel comfortable with cutting those numbers in case we. Well, again, the, the, the contracted number that um, uh, Jay was talking about was really just the application. Of, it was the helicopter putting it up in the air. So that's not the chemical part of it. Um, we do most of our our mosquito control in the ditches. Uh, so it's it's applied by a truck and a trailer and, and it's not done. We're only doing the, the helicopter uh, in the surrounding uh, up top in the, up of the hills. So. Okay, perfect. I just yeah. didn't want any surprises. And for the record, I'm, I'm not suggesting that if the if we're inundated because of a uh, wet spring, early summer, that we wouldn't control effectively. I'm suggesting that, that that is a significant amount of money to have on a budget that may not be allocated in a year when, because this guys, we, we, Tom, Lisa, and I have never seen a budget going into it where we were planning 300,000 in additional spending that hadn't been funded. So I'm, I'm seriously trying to find that money without us having to cut service or eliminate jobs. So the, the, um, I, I would, if 25,000 could be the figure and we reduced it by 15,000, I think that looks appropriate. And I was going to ask about chemicals and salts because if we're okay for stock, even though I see that you've reduced it to 25,000, it looks like 15,000 might be an appropriate figure um, unless there's a real rationale for, for why not. So I accept that the... Yeah. So I guess my comment would be... I think we have to be a little bit careful here um, because we are a community that depends an awful lot on tourism. And if and when we do get an outbreak of mosquitoes, uh, that can send tourists packing real quick. And from my experience of going places and being, you know, eaten alive by mosquitoes, guess what? You never go back. I mean, it's, it's that bad. So I, I would caution that this, this is something that is important to us um, and not to take it too lightly because I think it, it could very negatively affect our tourism industry if we let it get out of control somehow. Again, I'm not suggesting that we wouldn't deal with it effectively. I'm suggesting that leaving $40,000 on the books when perhaps history would indicate that we might need to do one spray and if not, we'll roll with it. But uh, I've been through three quarters of this document and I can't find more than $30,000 worth of savings uh, and a good chunk of it's in this page. And so if, if we can't, I doubt very much we're talking about the political will for a 6% property tax hike. So instead we're talking about service reductions and job is gone. So any place where we can make the paper say less money, even if we wind up having to take from accumulated surpluses or reserves to balance it off next year would be more uh, appropriate for me than heading in trying to find the funding for all that new spending out of property tax increases. And I think we, yeah, we agree that the going to one spray is so the 20,000, 25, I think 25. Hey? If, if two years ago it cost 23,000, 25 is probably, yeah. So that we're okay with that. Our final thing. And we only had one spray in 16. Because that was unbearable. That year was awful. Yeah, if I recall, I think that there was one in August. Because uh, there was one spray in August um, that uh, we, we could do. Because, again, part of it with when you're doing the helicopter spraying, there's other conditions you have to look at. Is, you know, wind conditions. And uh, there were some issues, I think, with helicopter availability in September we had. Um, just, just as a bit of a... Side one of the, in order to spray up top, we have to get what permission from the landowners that we don't have that for the land we don't do. And so, up until a year ago or a year and a half ago, we had a real challenge with getting sort of consistent, up, um, consistent acceptance from the owners. And we, we changed our process and actually, I think we went from 
somewhere around 40% to about 90% of the people saying yes to being able to spray. So um, in 16, we had a lot of issues where we didn't have, uh, we had a real patchwork of spraying approvals up top. So, and we only, and again, we only did it once because of weather. So Okay. So that's probably why they were as bad as they were. It's just because of that. So. Well, well, and they were bad down here too. And of course, as, as I remember quite well, because it was my second day here, we had three inches of rain one day in August, and that wasn't the only day in August we had rain. So we had some very significant events, and we couldn't dry the valley up at all. Right? So. so before we move off this one, yes or no, can we do anything on 276 on chemicals? You've already taken some off, Barb. And by some, I mean 20 grand. Is, is that the finest cut? I don't have the numbers, Jay, here with me, but I know when I did look at historical, I would look at 2013, 2014, 2015 and make my judgment at over five years. So I, I do feel it's probably a fair number based on that. Gotcha. Well, we can look at that. Confirm yeah, with, we, can uh, we can confirm with Reg. Plus, I need to not. see inventory. Like, Elian's going to check with... Um, Kevin tomorrow, Reg, to confirm yeah. how much inventory we have on. Yeah. Yeah. So. Any more questions? Um, okay. So then engineering 3101 function. The 2017 budget request was 565390 the 2018 request is 583 and $40. And reconciling the most or uh, greatest mentionable variances, we increased convention registration expense by $1,230 and we reduced other professionals' expense by 4000 eliminating the provision for recruitment we had in 2017. Barb, so this is one where I expected to see um, a lot of um, consultant stuff, but instead we have a lot of salaries. I just wanted to clarify, who is this? And there, uh, who's, whose salaries are being paid under under this line? Sure. Alain, do you know? Definitely um, a portion of the CAO. Um, is it 100% uh, of our... Infrastructure director. Would it be the um, uh, mapping? Shane, so, was Shane, Shane some of our GIS, Shane. Shane. Would it be all GIS? Yes. Yeah. Um, but we can get back to you on that, too, because we just need to go in the background and see who's allocated there. Probably okay. some of us. Uh, admin support. Support. Um, As some of, yes, like uh, Libby, yeah. yeah. And same question as Fred had before. In this one area, I don't get the amortization. Okay. Because it really should be. Unless it well, could, because it's town hall, right? 3101. Everybody who works in engineering works in town hall. So if we're amortizing town hall, I don't get the allocation here for amortization. That's all. Yeah. No, we'll look to see what's being amortized to this. Okay. It'd be vehicles for sure. Ah. Right. Okay. I can see that. But it's, just, it's, quite a, it's quite a sum. Yeah. So it's probably all the road. Like I'm guessing it'd be the graders and. Oh. The streets and roads. So. But I don't but, think we individualize amortization under streets and roads. I'll have to go look. It could be a share of, of, of could be a share of other amortization. Just like we apportion salaries, it could is be it? a share of. Or do we? Well, streets and roads is a big one where I don't yeah. budget 100. percent Yeah, I'll look. We'll look to Thank see. Thank you. I'm guessing partly vehicles for sure for the staff. Isn't 3202 though? Oh, 3102, the workshop. The building is not being amortized under 3102, the public workshop. So it's probably rolling up. We'll, we'll get back to you on that. <laughs> that thing hasn't been fully amortized yet. <laughs> the workshop. Well, it goes over like 50 years. Has it been 50 years? Oh, it has really been. <laughs> Buildings amortized over 50 uh, years. <laughs> it must be 49 and count. <laughs> we'll find out what's all in there, though, a general Thanks. idea. Anybody else? Okay. Workshop 3102. So the budget is 263, 375 from 2017 
in 2018 is 285 690 most of that is salaries and wages and benefits allocations the other changes there was an eight a $5,000 increase to repairs building it's it includes an one-time ask of eight thousand dollars to replace some office flooring there was a decrease of twenty five hundred dollars repairs to equipment an increase of five thousand repairs to structure again a one-time ask for a salt shed addition and other general services was um, decreased two thousand two hundred and ten you can just ignore the line from janitor supplies Yes, Jay, thank you. I don't want to go in camera, so I'm, I want to have this conversation without discussing uh, the land in question um, by name. This would be an example of, I don't want to spend another nickel in a place we might not be in very much longer. <clears throat> so, if that's the case, um, as it relates to, this is a bigger picture question. If we were to borrow, is that uh, uh, debt servicing in operating or in capital? So if we were to purchase a new shop somewhere within the town of Drumheller, um, would that cost of borrowing be operational or capital? Okay. So we would have to factor that back in as well. Gotcha. I thought as much. Okay, <clears throat> so my thinking here would just be I'm not okay with us. Until we've solved that bigger question, um, I'm not okay with any expenses at that location. Not not to refurbish. Yeah, and, that, yeah, and that's a fair, fair comment. I think that the um, as long as we have a little bit of money in there for emergent. Oh, of course. You know, but yes, I, I agree with the flooring request as well that uh, – shouldn't be in there um, until we solve some of our bigger questions. Gotcha. It was uh, some of whatever it repairs building is. Development yeah. is new since 308. We had yep. Yes. Done yeah. this, prepared this budget. Some yeah. things have evolved since then. Minus, minus 8,000. So. Yeah. One of the things Barb just mentioned, uh, Jay, is that uh, you know, this was prepared. 45 days ago, probably some of these some of these parts, right? So gotcha. we've had some discussions yep. since Subsequent then that we haven't changed yeah. that. So Understood. That, yeah, no, that's a very good point. So eight thousand, we just yeah, potentially that, but don't get excited because if we do what we're talking about doing, the borrowing costs will be in excess of hundreds of thousands. So. <laughs> Just got one so, quick one oh, for you. Sorry, <laughs> tiny yeah. little thing, but uh, line three hundred three, the wellness program, two dollars. Really? Oh, good catch. <laughs> Thank you, Willie. Yeah. Sad. I thought maybe two at five hundred. Um, two. So I just want to. Um, may I ask just one question? The salt shed request, that to me would seem something that would be transferable. Um, and if they have a need for it, would we be eliminating that request? Because I would think if there was a relocation, I would just get, I'm thinking it's like a shed. Or yeah. the flooring. The okay, right. so I can leave That's the salt, right. the salt shed, shed Yeah, I, I was just going to make that same okay. comment because that, that would stay. Well, I would assume they would take that, yeah. Yeah, it's basically a can canvas-type structure that just protects the, the salt from the elements so that you can actually grab it when you're – it's not frozen clumpy when you're going to load it for your uh, salt and sand spreaders. I know it's a cheap place you could store it. No, no, it's – I don't think you could – It's you actually use a loader to actually go into the – structure to get it in. It's not, it's not bags of salt.
function. Okay. Roads, 3202. So budget request 2017 was a million fifty one thousand four ninety eight. Budget request 2018, a million 127, 027. 60,000 of that, um, 67,000 of that is global numbers. So other than that, we've reduced revenue, which is custom work, by $8,500 to better reflect historical um, results. We increased repairs, equipment expense, budget 1,500. We increased repairs to structures, 1,500 increased um, chemicals and salt by $5,500. That was largely, there was um, a request to do another um, calcium chloride dust control um, application, and then increased sand and gravel request by $1,000. Okay. Just the um, global amount, again, a reclassification board, it's a huge one, 60K. Somebody's salary was going some other direction. This isn't new staff. No, there's no new staff. It's just where they concentrated their time. Maybe this year it was more roads, or it's hard to judge where they're going to spend their time till the salary um, timesheets come in. But there's no new staff. Gotcha. And um, <clears throat> don't think that I don't desperately want to cut from chemical salt, sand, and gravel. But I, I again, I'm guessing that snowfall alone this year is already more than anticipated. Yeah. The, one, the one good thing is that as per some of our changes with respect to contracts is we've actually put tenders out for some of this stuff and we've been seeing better pricing than we had been in the past when we just phoned up people for prices. So so that's that's the one benefit we've, we've seen over the last little while. But um, of course, transportation to get those products here has gone up because of carbon tax and fuel and everything else. So we, we are still seeing a bit of an increase in that. So. And whereabouts is this extra calcium chloride provision or extra uh, location? I could say Drumheller, but that'd be a bit too... I, I, well, I yeah, want to say really East Cooley. No, it's, yeah. it's um, generally when we're doing calcium chloride, we're, uh, it's, we're doing East Cooley. Uh, so we usually do a, a road or two in East Cooley every mm -hmm. year. Um, Mabbit Road, I think, down by... We I believe. Might. Well, Mabbit's paid. Mabbit's paid. Well, Mabbit's but in, paid. in but, down but, there's um, could be area of Crescent. So, so we... Yeah, I'm not... I couldn't tell you exactly where the road is, but I know that we did say we... Last year we wanted to do one more road in uh, East Cooley this year, okay. so... Uh, does this include bridges, this category? It includes um, operation on, on, or the maintenance of our three bridges, well, our four bridges, yes. So is that 336? That's bridges, yes. 336? Has a $22,000 provision in there for bridge inspections and repairs. I thought we were going to kind of redo one significant bridge. And that's, so that's and a capital item. That's, that's a capital, capital item. And that's dependent on uh, provincial STIP funding, if we if we get that. Uh, one of the things we have 22000 in here for um, repair wooden walking. So we actually are responsible for, uh, we're replacing the, the walk decking underneath the Gordon Taylor Bridge on the, south side of the bridge so right by the spray park there's um, old trex type decking there so that's being replaced as well as we're responsible for the sidewalks on the bridges up to wayne so uh, so the at is responsible for the actual bridge deck and the pavement surface but we're responsible if there's any sidewalks and there is <clears throat> one sidewalk on uh, so there's a sidewalk on bridge number one, a wooden sidewalk. So there was some repair work to that this year that we're also going to be doing. So, I know I keep asking amortization. What does that include? Roads and streets definitely would be, um, if not 
if the greater than that's not in there, it would be all the large equipment, but it would be the road, you know, like all the roads, curbs, gutters. Um, yeah. So if that's the case, why would it drop from from one million to three hundred and seventy-eight thousand to three hundred and sixty-eight? Why the big drop? From sure. 17 actual and 16 actual. So if I could just explain. So amortization, we don't fully fund in our budget 100% of amortization. And my goal has always been to fully fund amortization in all functions except roads. So we know that only one function is underfunded in budget. And so that's kind of where it is. But if the actual numbers are the actual numbers. So you can see there... Um, you know, we were under seven, six hundred thousand or so last year. This budget, and then it just. So, what was the variance on the sand and gravel? Like I can see, in twenty sixteen it was almost sixty thousand, but then in twenty seventeen it was only twenty five thousand. So, just uh, caution you again not to put a. Yeah, because yeah, oh, December that's okay. something that we book at, at a gotcha. year end entry. Any other questions? Wow, we're just moving along here. Street lighting. 3203. Budget 2017 request was 385, 310. Budget request 2018, 393, 235. And um, primarily allocation to salary and wages. And just small change in utilities. Questions? In the past, when you allocated your salaries, like how come we're getting so many changes this year? Is it just something you caught up on, or so if they've been doing some work on street lights, in particular, say downtown, I think are our street lights that we have to repair. So it's largely driven by timesheets okay. or actual numbers. Yeah. So you, so they change every year. Yeah. Right. They, you're cha they're changing every year then based on on the work that they did last year. Or what they anticipate, if they say to us, for example, we're going to be doing a lot of work this year at the reservoir and the water reservoir, then we would allocate more wages there if we know that their attention is going to be spent in that area. Otherwise, we kind of go by current year's actuals. Okay. Traffic services. 3204, the budget 2017 was 49,290. The budget request for 2018, 61,890. Um, again, it's primarily all the global numbers, the salary, wages, and benefits change in allocation. Barbara, I'm sorry, can we just pop back to that other sheet and just explain the other income as far as it goes with? With um, lighting Is it street and street lights, yeah. the other income, sure. So the current franchise agreement, whenever a um, street light has to be replaced, it changes from what was invested to non-invested or non-invested to invested. I get the terminology mixed up, but essentially, um, if it costs them. If they feel that it's worth eight thousand dollars and it only costs them six to put in, we get the difference, correct? And then, and and the franchise agreement, you'll see that increasing more and more over time because as the street lights get changed out, they will all switch to what's called the invested rate, and we get a little bit of a. I so said we get a little bit of a payment sometimes, unless it costs a lot more for them to replace it. Sometimes we pay a bill if it costs them a lot to replace that. Additionally, in 2017, um, we had, um, it, what's the actual number in there? Sorry. Revenue, we had some big revenue because there was some overbilling on street lights in, uh, by the penitentiary area, so there was a big billing correction. So I think that might be reflected in our actual numbers. That was about 
60,000. Yeah, because that was 66,000. I just wasn't sure right. if I booked it yet into this right. sheet. Yeah. So that is was an unusual and, and extraordinary okay. um, payment. And just maybe just on that to explain to everybody, um, when it was the, si the city of Drumheller or any city is responsible for all its infrastructure. Um, and when we went to a town, key highway lighting uh, became now the responsible, or key highway or lighting on the highway became responsibility of uh, Alberta Transportation. As part of our turnout, South Hill turnout last year, we had to move a light. And when we did that, we actually, at and us found out that um, both the town and Alberta Transportation paid for the, I think it's 12 street lights at the intersection of the penitentiary and the highway, the penitentiary road for the last, well, since 1998. So uh, since we became a town, so that they gave us a credit, ATCO gave us a credit back of about $65,000 for that uh, double billing. So, and then we also, as part of that, we actually found out there are other lights in town that we have both either been charged where we shouldn't have been charged or we've been double billed. So we expect to see a few more credits in 2018 as well. So. How about the lights going out to Nackmine? Who's paying for that? Uh, that is Alberta Transportation. So, yeah, they paid for the capital and the operating for those. Okay, so is there any questions on traffic services? Uh, I want to ask a question on salaries. I, mean, I know I brought this up before, but I just, um, I'm having trouble. I'd like to know what the percentage is because I realize that you guys take it and you break it down and, you know, and I understand that, yes. you know, if a person does four jobs or work. Yes. But I, I'm trying to figure out what is our percentage overall? Is there something like I'm just ask Tom if there's something in the, pass at, you, at the end of this that I get sure. that or well I can get that number for you so you're just looking for salary um, percentage of salary wages and benefits to the entire budget yeah right? so that so we know whether that pie chart that you had well the part yeah so if our budget is so if our budget is like oh. 18 million and is our salaries like are or six or yeah. 70 percent yeah, we can do that for 58 next meeting. just because it I Absolutely. think it will help us all because Obviously, salaries are our based expense. Sure, absolutely. And I just, you know, I kind of, I guess I work a lot on percentages, and I'm just trying to figure out what percentage, because I'm trying to add this all up, and it's, yeah, sorry. I would I just, expect it to be almost two-thirds of our operating budget, frankly. Yeah. That's why, that's why I'm saying that if we're talking about new spending uh, and trying to find the money anywhere else than increasing revenue, that we're talking about eliminating existing positions because that's where the money is. That's well, I just think we just need to know what percentage yeah. of that because businesses have to operate on a percentage of their wages. And are we are we in that yeah. or not? That's all. Like, I mean, if we're in there, then hey. But if we're, if we're not, probably, I just like to figure out, you know, do we have to figure out where it's all at? I'm just, it's just, yeah, I'm sorry, that's. The only part of this, I've, I've studied this book, and I think you've done an amazing job, and I like the whole um, really detailed information you give, but I just that there's just so much money there. We need to think about what the percentage is. So thanks. Well, that's, that's a totally fair question, and that's, oh. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's we have a calculator, and here, want to use my phone? She has it. Uh, she has it. Has that information. She has to. Oh, sorry. So uh, specifically to traffic services, uh, the only question I had was on lines 363. Just asking what that reflected. What other general services are under that line item? It's it's a paint, it's our line painting contract. Oh, okay. Thank you. So this is all the traffic lines in uh, town. Would it take a lot more to get permanent lines? There's no such thing. 
seriously, there's no such thing like, yeah. Um, so one of the challenges between when you were younger, when we were all younger and now is that you can't use oil-based paint anymore. And in the old days when you could use oil-based paint, that's why the line stayed so long. So most, most communities do in Western Canada do two line app painting applications per year if they want to see lines 11 months of the year. So it, the province is a good example of that. They do spring, summer, and a fall application on their highways. So. Okay, so Ellen just did a quick um, calculation and our salaries, wages, and benefits it represents 30% of our total budget. We have a 17 million. And I have not yet put on the agenda. Um, they just came in. We just got our financial indicator graphs. So that's something that the municipal affairs prepares annually for us. And, and it will be on a very soon agenda. Um, but just, yeah, that was just tax supported, by the way, on the salaries, yeah, I was wages, say that's and that's benefits. That's really low. I mean, I wish it was that, but yeah, maybe tax do some homework on budget that. budget reflects thirty percent. Okay. Um, so, anyways, on the financial indicators, they compare us to like communities. Um, salaries, wages, and benefits per capita. The Drumheller for twenty sixteen was seven hundred and sixty six dollars per capita. Um, the median was $778, so we are below the comparative communities that they do compare us to, and this information will be in a future council package. Just to give you some idea that we are in comparative to others. And I have that here if you want to take a look at. Right, because water, water could be end up You're welcome. And we should just email that. Um, when that calculation for salaries, wages, and benefits, you all have this paper here. It showed that the um, glo total global percentage of all the global totals for tax support, which is, you know, our utilities, our salaries, wages, insurance, that represented 48.17% of our total budget, remember? So when she just did that calculation, Heather, there was the total salaries and the total budget for you. Yeah, I don't, I I still have trouble with that number. I so like that's it. how she I did like the math. Yeah, I, yeah. I just, yeah, I, I don't, uh, I think no it's got to be at least 50% or more. My way I've calculated out, but maybe I've, I forgot my sheet at home, of course, but, uh, okay. so I'll look at it again. Thank you. Okay. So traffic services were good. We talked about traffic services, right? That's slightly confused. Okay. Airport function 3301. Yeah. So the 2017 ask was 130,485. The 2018 ask is 14470. Um we increased revenue to add, add gas by $1,000. We increased the budget request for contracted services by 5,000 and that's a new request for line painting out at the airport. We increased revenues uh, repairs other requests by $1,000 to better align with historical costs and um, to represent the increase in the annual cost of the navigation equipment maintenance repair contract. Other general services was increased $44.80 for that. Where's the revenue coming in on the budget? Let's 
So line C372 or 372, sale of utility, that's the aviation fuel. That's it. And then, yeah. Oh, and the rental. So, so we do anticipate, hopefully, to get a better grasp on the Avgas sales now that that new dispenser system is in. Mm -hmm. The telephone. Who are we phoning up there? Well, part of it would be we do advertise, so it's the telephone line number that advertising up there for that. But we also have to have them. You're mandatory to have an emergency phone at so, the airport. And I don't know what else. Again, telephones is an allocation. We pay part of the yellow pages and part of the main line. And, and a janitor for our terminal? Janitorial would be for the terminal. And who is in the terminal? Um, who manages the terminal? Fox Cooley manages Fox the Fox Cooley terminal. is in there, and we're paying the, the janitorial services for them to be in the office. Is that correct? Um, well, I would suspect it's we don't pay to clean their office, but the general terminal, I would suspect we would okay. um, be responsible for cleaning. Well, is this the last time we're looking at budget? I would suggest we put this one aside and have a representative from the airport board come back with some ideas. I don't even, I'm, I'm angry at this one. I don't even want to look at it. I think one thing we have to think about there, um, and I would like Greg maybe to um, fill us in when we do have this report or uh, you know extra conversation on the emergency management um, aspect of the airport. So how does that fit into our crisis plan and emergency management and stuff? Nice to have an airport, um, but it's not integral. It's not like a fundamental part of our you know, plan or anything like that. You know. If I if I can sort of offer a couple of comments, I think historically we've been reluctant to actually look at the true cost of the airport. We've looked at it from more of that. It's not like the hospital or some of these other things that it's, we should have it at whatever cost. And um, when we were doing a cursory look of what, there's a great document that the Alberta Airport Association puts out with all of the airport, a survey of all the airport uh, fees. A number of airports charge for uh, terminal rental, so not just hangar rental, but terminal rental, landing fees, of course, gas is an easy one, but there's a number of fees in there that can really increase the amount of revenue for it. Um, I know one of the <clears throat> challenges that I think that, and it's sort of pre, pre most of us is that the airport manager arrangement, it has been in the past, um, no payment from them they would manage our av gas for us so if you flew in there in the middle of the night or on a weekend you'd call them and they would fuel you up and for that uh, that was they would get free rent of the terminal office in exchange for that uh, and now that we've gotten into our own system you know we, we have to look at we collectively the, the board as well as council have to look at what are we doing up there what is Fox Cooley doing up there? Um, you know, what are some of the, and are we actually getting a fair shake for it? So, because um, one of, you know, an easy comment would be, well, we could sell it, sell the airport out. And, and Barb's got a good example, and she, she actually sold an airport and um, to Fox Cooley and a few, several. It wasn't, wasn't. So anyway, it was, so you could sell these things. Fox Cooley, of course, is of the belief that we should be spending a lot more money up there because we have to make the runway perfect. And, you know, when ideas where we've talked about um, drag racing and stuff, you know, they're absolutely uh, against that because, of course, it disturbs their business model and it does it does destroy the track, or the runway, but there's no question about that. But there are things that we, we need to take a really hard look at. And I just think that it hasn't been done in a long, long time. And now that we've got one piece, a key piece in place of we're managing our own fuel here. It's a lot easier to be able to say, okay, so if Fox Cooley, if you want to stay there, here's what it's going to cost you or, or other tenants as well. So. 
I would, I, uh, oh, oops. Sorry, Fred. I just would also suggest considering that we don't collect any uh, from the tax base and that Starline County does that. Perhaps this council should uh, look at some negotiations with Starline County to have a better relationship to cost share. Yeah. Yes, I agree. That was going to be my comment. Thanks, Lisa. But along that same vein, um, overtures have been made in the past and their interest level was low. Um, so I come at this from a much, I mean, I think part of that presentation absolutely needs to be the bona fide economic development benefit of having an airport. Um, if there isn't a safety one, then there better be an economic development one. Otherwise, we're talking about the gross subsidization of a, of a hobby primarily done by non-residents of the town of Drumheller. And, uh, and we ought not be in the gross subsidization of hobby business. Well, not just a hobby, because I think if you were to do a, and, and this would be part of the economic development equation, is, is that you know, Fox Cooley does an awful lot of contract spraying out of right. that airport. So, right. but they don't do, but how does that benefit Drumheller? Right. right. So that's part of that question for sure. So. And while we're on this, the um, line, line 381 was the only one I could find on this page where um, I, I'm just not okay with your actuals and the ask. Um, could it be 6K? Could we live with it being 6K? So, um, and I understand why you're not, it just, I've had a couple of carryovers on projects that they've wanted to do. So um, one of them is a terminal and garage maintenance, and that was a $6,000 request, and it's been carried over for oh. whatever reason a couple of years. And um, the basement in the terminal needs a sump pump installation, and that was a $1,500 oh, okay. budget and got carried over. So the answer is no. Yeah. But at the same time, in revenue, just to lighten the mood since Fred's mad, um, are you telling me that we're not getting substantial annual royalties from the knockaround guys? Around who? Oh my God! <laughs> there was a really bad movie oh. that used that used the Drumheller Airport as a set for several scenes. Oh, so it was. But I can say, in my experience of selling an airport, it was the exact same situation where the town was paying all of the costs and it needed significant in upgrades, and we actually had found a unique opportunity to sell it to. But at the end of the day, the MD stepped in because. Box Cooley was the primary um, user for spraying agricultural fields. So it was an interesting challenge, but it was the exact same scenario concerns, right? We've what? actually talked about this a little bit at some of our RCMP, CAC meetings. And, and just to give you an example of how the airport fits into a little bit of the disaster services, uh, when we had the 2013 flood, uh, we had a helicopter, RCMP helicopter, um, that was patrolling the dikes, um, and the helicopter was able to fuel up at the airport and therefore stay in the air for much longer rather than having to go all the way to Calgary, fuel up, and then come all the way back. Uh, the second thing is that the STARS Air Ambulance, um, the pad that we have at the current hospital, only is big enough for the small one. And so if there is a big need, heaven forbid, um, then they would use the airport for a fixed wing and bigger helicopters to get in and out. I'm not sure anyone's suggesting that we bulldoze the airport. I think we're suggesting that we no longer want to be in the airport business. There's a big difference. Um, if someone else decided to be in that business, then whether it was a private operator or if we were to decide we had no choice but to cease operations, then a, uh, one of these, well, the most appropriate county might choose that they have no choice but to step in. But, uh, yeah, I don't think we're, I don't think we're talking about taking a bulldozer to it. We're talking about trying to find some way to offset the, uh, the I mean, the amortization costs alone is ha almost half of the request. And, uh, and so that's a significant, we're, you know, we're putting away a lot of money every year to repair something that we're really not sure we should be in the business of. So, that's a, it's a entirely appropriate vein of conversation. So is there anything that we can do? Like, is it, does it come up to us now to try to like generate some revenue? Like, should we start advertising to say, you know, shuttle planes? I don't know anything like, is that our responsibility? 
I think, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I, th I think that part of it is, is that we have to, we have to reconvene the airport commission board, which hasn't had a meeting in, a, in a, more than a year. Um, and there are different users of that, which I think you have to, that it would have to weigh in on it. Right? Because of course, if we said that we were going to suddenly try to attract 20 flights a day out of there, I'm sure that our, which might be good for one side of it, I'm sure that the Fox Coolies of the world would be very upset because now they can't run their business out of there. So I think that collectively you have to look at what's what's the best thing for the airport as a whole and, and whether it gets advertised, there are, it's advertised in the um, aviation magazines on a monthly or bi-monthly basis, whatever that comes out across Canada. Um, we now have, since we put the new uh, fuel system in, we're adding that as a feature, which according to several aviators will actually increase the amount of people that will stop in from Heller because they can just swipe their credit card and get fuel as opposed to having to phone somebody in the middle of the weekend. Um, but yeah, and, and I think to maybe change the verbiage a bit from what uh, Jay said, I think we'd like to be in the airport business, not the airport subsidy or airport uh, donation, which is what we are doing right now. And I think I'm okay to be in the business where we actually show that it's at least almost a break even as opposed to the heavy subsidy that we're at right now. So. I would agree. I think that um, we've been trying to get everybody to understand user pay and the actual costs. And I think we're, we've been avoiding it. And I think it's something we have to look at. What garage at the airport, what did they do with it? It's the garage that holds our uh, lawnmowers, uh, other small maintenance equipment. So it's a like the single car garage, and it, what's happening is it's literally sinking into the ground. So it needs to be lifted up um, and a new little uh, footing put around it so that it doesn't fall. Because right now we're not able to open the doors and uh, stuff, but it holds our equipment up there. So, so Fox Cooley manages all of the multitude of planes that come in and gasses them up and doesn't do anything else, doesn't mold the lawn, doesn't do their own janitorial in the in there. That's it, right? Well, they do their own janitorial. They don't do our janitorial. Right? So the, the terminal's got several rooms upstairs of which part of the built, part of it's theirs, mm -hmm. and they pay their portion of the janitorial, and then we pay for the general portion of the uh, of, of the terminal, so the vestibule and kind of where pilots and people can come in. So, you know, it, we didn't say it was a great deal. We just said it was the deal. So, Is that storage shed even necessary? All that stuff is portable, and if we're sending employees up from the valley anyways, would it not make more sense just to transport it at time of need rather than fixing a building that's decrepit? Yeah, that's a possibility to, to look at, yeah. Certainly, I know I've asked that question about the lawnmowers as well because we take lawnmowers all over the place. But uh, that's why we got trailers. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, it's it's a question that Armia can ask Kevin. So yeah, and also on my when I was campaigning, people did ask for actually that runway to be lengthened so that we could get more planes in here from up north and that kind of stuff. So we could increase our tourism that kind of thing if it was longer. But it's, I guess, I don't know anything about runways, but it's at a difficult length for actual planes to come in from, you know, bigger planes to come in. So I guess if. Yeah, and I think part of the challenge with that is that we don't own land necessarily. And I know just to resurface that runway, you're looking at more than half a million dollars. So if you were lengthening it, it would be a significant dollar. But how many people are flying up to Fort Mac and stuff from around here still? None? They're driving or because yeah, exactly. Like if they could do Cessnas that take them up to closer, like. I guess there used to be a couple of commuter planes that would go to, if I remember hearing correctly, Edmonton and then up to Fort Mac and stuff. But they stopped, according to Fox Cooley, they stopped a few years ago, probably around the same time as uh, oil decrease so but we we wouldn't get paid or we would get paid for them landing is that how that works land and take off or just the well, fuel well we don't now um again that would be part of what we we should be looking at is some of the new 
implementing new fees as opposed to just simply increasing the rent for a hangar space. So, and that's what a lot of other airports do. And, and, and some airports, you know, again, there's, if I remember, there's about 75 airports that were surveyed and some charge, some charge a lot, others don't charge anything. So, so I think there's a lot of airports that are in, or a lot of communities are in very similar situations to ours, trying to figure out what do they do with this, this infrastructure that they have. And, do you do you bulldoze it? Do you sell it? Do you let it? You know, do you try to fix it up? And those are all really good questions that I think you have to just you have to approach with how we would do business here with it. You know, so. Okay, let's take a five-minute break. <laughs> 